Microsoft just changed Azure file premium pricing. In this video, I show you how to take advantage of it. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and welcome to my channel. Want to save some cash on Azure Files Premium? You're in the right place. Because in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that without sacrificing performance. But real quick, if you find this helpful, hit that like button, subscribe, and share it with a friend who's deep in the Azure trenches. It helps the channel grow and I seriously appreciate it. Also check out my courses on AVD, Enter ID, Windows 365, and the AZ900. Links are below. And a big shout out to all my channel members, you rock. So here's the deal. Previously, if you wanted better performance with higher IOPS and throughput from a premium Azure file share, you had to bump up the capacity. That meant paying for a bunch of extra space that you didn't even need just to get more IOPS and throughput. Not ideal, right? That's the provision V1 billing model. Everything, capacity, IOPS, and throughput were tied together. So if you needed more speed, you had to pay for more capacity, even if that capacity sat empty. Many FS Logix deployments, for example, ended up with extra storage space solely to meet the performance needs. But now things have changed. Say hello to Provision V2. With Provision V2, you can scale capacity, IOPS, and throughput separately. That means you only pay for what you actually need. No more over-provisioning just to hit performance targets. Provision V2 has been around for standard file shares for a while, but now it's available for premium also. And that opens up a lot of flexibility when provisioning storage. Coming up, we'll walk through a couple different scenarios to help figure out when V1 makes sense and when V2 is a better deal. Then we'll jump into deploying a premium V2 storage account step-by-step. Step. And stick around to the end, I'll show you how to tweak those settings if your file share needs to change down the road. Let's dive in. Let's start out by comparing premium Azure file storage with the premium V1 and V2 billing model. At the time of this recording, the Azure pricing calculator is unable to display information for premium files with a provision V2 pricing. It only shows V1 pricing. Hopefully by the time you watch this, the pricing calculator will work with premium files and V2 pricing. In the first example, we'll compare provision V1 and V2 with the same IOPS and throughput. The estimated costs are based on a month of usage. I created a spreadsheet for the comparison since the pricing calculator doesn't work yet for premium files with V2 billing. I'll make this available at my blog, the link is below, but try the Azure pricing calculator first. It's easier to use because it automatically populates the cost per region. There are two Azure file resources added to the spreadsheet. The first is provision V1, Let's set that to one tebibyte or 1,024 gigabytes. At one tebibyte, we get 4,024 IOPS and 203 metabytes of throughput. The estimated cost is 185 US for the central region. I'm rounding these numbers. Next, let's go to provision V2. We'll add the same settings, one tebibyte, 4,024 IOPS and 203 metabytes of throughput. The estimated cost is $166. That saves us about 10% a month by going with the Provision V2 model. Next, we'll see what happens if we need to size for capacity. In this example, we need two tebibytes of space. We don't need performance. 2,000 IOPS and 100 metabytes per second of throughput are all that's required for this example. If we go back to P1 and change it to two tebibytes or 2,048 gigabytes, that increases the IOPS and throughput. We don't need the extra performance for this example, just the capacity, but all three are bound with provision V1. The estimated cost for two tebibytes of provision V1 storage is $371. Let's go to provision V2. For V2 capacity, IOPS and throughput are allocated separately. Let's change the capacity to two tebibytes and we'll set the IOPS to 2000 and the throughput to 100 metabytes per second. That's all that's required for this example. By the way, the first 3000 IOPS and 100 metabytes of throughput are no charge for premium storage with P2 billing. That's why it's not showing a value in this example for IOPS and throughput. We actually get more IOPS than we require because the minimum is 3000. That gives us an estimated cost of 253 for V2 storage that meets our capacity and performance requirements. That's over $110 a month cheaper than V1. So if we're sizing for capacity and don't need high performance file shares, V2 could save a significant amount. 
In the next example, we only need one terabyte of space, but we need at least 7,000 IOPS and 500 metabytes of throughput. This example is sizing for performance, not capacity. Let's go back to provision V1. We only need one terabyte, but with provision V1, we need to increase the capacity to four tebubytes to get 7,000 IOPS and 500 metabytes of throughput required for this example. That brings the estimated cost to 741. And we have three tebubytes of space that we don't actually need. Let's go to provision V2. We'll change the capacity to one tebubyte. That's all this example requires. Then we'll change the IOPS to 7,000 and throughput to 500 to meet the requirements of this example. That gives us the estimated cost of $280. That's for the one tebubyte of capacity, 7,000 IOPS, and 500 metabytes per second of throughput. That's over $450 less than comparable performance with the Provision V1 share. As the data shows, there are significant cost savings with Provision V2 billing. Additionally, we can modify the three settings, capacity, IOPS, and throughput, independently as needed. As I said earlier, you can find this spreadsheet at my blog, the link is below, but try the Azure pricing calculator first and use that if premium file shares with P2 pricing is available. Let's take a look at how to create a provision P2 premium file share next. From the Azure portal and storage accounts, let's create a storage account. Set the subscription and resource group, Give the storage account a name and set the region. Remember, Azure storage accounts have to be 3 to 24 characters long, globally unique, and can't contain special characters. For the storage type, select Azure Files and select Premium Performance. Initially, Provision V2 was only available for standard, but now it's available on Premium. We'll set file share billing to Provision V2. That's a very important step in this example. Update redundancy, or you can leave it as is. You can update any of the other settings as needed. For this demo, we'll leave the rest as default and go to review and create and then create the file share. We'll give that a minute to finish. The video will pause here until it's done. The deployment finished, let's go to the resource and create the file share. From the storage account, go to data storage file shares. We'll add a file share, give it a name and set the capacity. Notice by default performance is set to a recommended value. That's based on the provision storage capacity. It follows the V1 billing model. If we double the capacity, the recommended IOPS and throughput increase as well. But the advantage of provision V2 is that we can modify these independently. Let's change the performance to manually specify IOPS and throughput. We can now change these settings independently. If we only need 4,000 IOPS and 200 metabytes of throughput, for example, we could set that here. Notice we can set the provision size to maximum and it shows the minimum and maximum IOPS and throughput available. It doesn't show the estimated cost, however, so be sure to set that appropriately. We have the option to set the protocol to SMB or NFS. Let's go next to backup. You can use a backup if you like, but for this example, it won't be enabled because this is just a demo account. We'll go to review and once validation passes, we'll create. And that brings us back to the share. We can modify the capacity and performance settings from the overview page by clicking on the provision storage, IOPS, or throughput. Each opens the same window. By the way, if you don't have this option available, it's likely that provision v2 wasn't selected for the billing method. From here, we can modify the settings to update the share. Note that it's only possible to decrease any of these settings once every 24 hours. We could, however, temporarily increase these settings if we had a monthly automation job like a file sync that required high IOPS and throughput for a couple days, we could increase performance for the duration of the job and then decrease it to save costs the rest of the month. That is how to price, create, and modify an Azure Files Premium Provision V2 storage account. That's how to compare V1 and V2 pricing, deploy a premium V2 file share, and adjust it as needed. If this video helped you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.